It's a new season. It's a new day. And God is good. It's revival time again here at St. Paul, uh, 7 p.m. each night. Our revival preacher once again will be Dr. Wesley McLaughlin, the great pastor of the Mount Island Missionary Baptist Church in Petersburg, Virginia. We always had it together. I'm not talking to those church folk that have been so perfect and want to brag about you being so clean. But I'm talking about some folk that know that God has given you another chance. You're talking about me. Yeah, he's talking about you. So come out each night at 7 p.m. and receive the blessing that God has for you because it is your season. season. May the 14th through the 16th at St. Paul Baptist Church, 1309 Lawkins Street in Greensboro. The marks of a healthy church. And as I began to look over this text and study this text and see what the Lord had in this text for us, it ties in with a whole lot of things that we've been echoing uh, from this pulpit for some time. And it really ties in with um, our rap session on yesterday morning, um, a church as a whole. Um, we have to look at the things that shows us what is a healthy church. Just because a church is filled up from front to back, and standing room only, Ministries are going out left and right doing things does not mean that church is healthy. Aside from our viewpoint of looking at it, and we think because they got a lot going on that that's a healthy church. But you can be busy and not be healthy. Amen. We already see that in our own lives that being busy does not always mean that we are being healthy. If we, pull, if we was to do a poll this morning, the truth be told, we don't get the adequate sleep that we should. But well, let, let me change that. Some of you, know, some folks can stay in the bed all day. Some of us don't get the adequate rest that we should to help our bodies, immune system, to be strong. We don't eat the proper amount of vegetables to help our immune system, and that's why when sickness comes, it just wipes us out because we have not done the right thing. Even though from my outside appearance, I may look healthy. I may talk healthy. It might even act healthy, but knowing that I'm not healthy. And that's why we say that, that we look at this as the marks of a healthy church. To see where we are, to help us to get focused in how to become a healthy church according to what God has already institutionalized in his word. And this is the prescription that God has for the church as these moms. Paul's greeting here is different from his greeting of all other letters in which Paul wrote. <coughs> uh, here he does not refer to himself as the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the reason that Paul does not do that, he does not have to defend his call from God, his relationship with the church that filled the Bible, just what it should be. A relationship founded and rooted in Jesus Christ and the love and respect that they had for one another. Here Paul has his son in the ministry, Timothy, with him. And here they agree upon the church and speak as Paul said, Paul and Timothy, the servant of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we all know that we're servants, amen? One thing that I don't want us to ever lose out on is the servant's mentality. Once we lose being a servant and losing the servant mentality, we forget about who we are working for, or working with, excuse me. We forget about the, 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 the urgency or the passion that we ought to have in what we're doing to glorify our God. So remember, it does you never above serving in the house of God. Amen? I always use the example of telling the Bible study, if you're asked to be on the push broom committee, do it the best you can. Push the broom, pick up the paper. All you're doing is to glorify God. Amen? We always got to remember that. So we find now the first thing that we need to look at that the mark of a healthy church is that a healthy church disciples young people. A healthy church 
disciple, you know, now if you take a note, that's point one, you need to write it down. A healthy church disciples young people. The adults and the youth together. There was a deep affection that bond Paul and Timothy together. Their affection found and found its roots and purpose in the mission of Jesus. Paul contributed, beloved, the wisdom of experience. But Timothy, the hope and vibrant energy of youth. That's why, beloved, we need the young folk. Amen. And the young folk need us. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible says that, that, that beloved, that he said, that in one point of scripture, he said, the old man dream dreams. I mean, he dream about stuff that he used to do. Oh, he wish he could do, but then the young man see visions of now things that are happening that they go into. So we need each other. And we need to understand that we have to help disciple the young people to understand the purpose of Christ for their lives. Instead of us, beloved, want <laughs> to stereotype them and say they are just like the rest of them, let's get to know them. See, I told y'all it's how I didn't to be no yesterday. I had to, this is God's divine providence. That we need to learn how to cross those bridges and say, I need you and you need me. Amen. Instead of just turning our noses up, because you know, we've been where they've been. And what we need to try to help them understand, we cross those bridges, but we want to let you know that our lives in crossing those bridges, we made some mistakes or we did some sins that were not pleasing in God's sight. <clears throat> the mob, the first part of the healthy church, is that they disciple the young people. They give them the opportunity to worship. They be a part of the worship service. They, they, they involve them. They're going to let them sit there and do nothing. And I've always have echoed and said to us, a church without young people will soon die out. And that's what we don't want to happen at St. Paul. We need to be taking our young people under the wings and letting them know that we love them, but also grooming them for the ministry. Let them know about our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Now, the adults always hold the primary responsibility and privilege of taking hold of the young people and making disciples of them. They're not going to come on their own. We got to go get them. Come on, talk back to them if you can now. We, we, we can't sit there and say, well, they're going to be all right. They're on the choir. Are they on the mind ministry? Are they on the praise dance ministry? Are they on the usher ministry? We can't sit there. We got to go get them because some of them need that special nurturing that we have. Amen. Amen. That's what he's saying. We can't expect them. And then we have to carry ourselves in a way where they will want to come to us. Even go on and get them, just not let that be a one-time thing, but being able to come to us and say, look, we're here for you. But then, you know, when we start to share, when we start to talk about each side, of it, we can learn something from one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the older people, the ones that are getting older, we can learn today's slang. We can learn the words that they use and that help us understand when they say certain words, we know what they're getting off, they, they're talking about. Amen. See, like, 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 like my mentor said yesterday, this young man was flossed. See, some folk, young folk, what is cost? And, and Brother Lambert had to let him know he, he, he was sharp, he was dead die. See, see, the, the same, and just change the word mean the same thing. But if we fail to build the relationship between each other, we would lose all that. And we would understand what they're talking about. So that's why I feel that we need to listen sometimes to the music they listen to. Sit down and have a conversation with our young folks and just listen to what they're saying and say, what they're talking about. You know today, today's modern, uh, uh, the, the, the modern communication today is texting. Y'all know that, right? Some of us going to be left out, D D or, you know, when, when, when it comes to texting. And, and, and sometimes I get text messages, y'all, and I, I see their language. They don't spell out Y-O-U. They use the letter you. And I'm saying, that's what I first got, what are you talking about? But after talking, well, well then this is the way we, we the way we talk, so why to spell all the words out? But then I see that as being a problem when it comes to vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, I see that. So but yet, this is how they do it. So 
they're, they're saying you, but they're not spelling you out, but they're being the same thing that we're saying. So when we learn how to, 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 to come together and to bridge and come across those bridges, it makes things better. And then we become to the point where we're able to disciple the young people to the church. Let them know that church ain't all about, we don't have to think it has to be old and folk and dull. We have to, church is what we make out of it. And what we want from it. Not only that, but uh, that, that, that was the command of the Lord and the Great Commission. Go ye therefore and make disciples out of them. So we got to go get them to help them to become the disciples that God will have them to be. Therefore, the believer must always keep this focus upon finding young people and making disciples out of them. Let's don't give up, church. They don't dress like we dress. See, back in the day, we couldn't dress like, but it's it, it just coming a fad, but yet, we still need to tell them, when you go in for the job interview, pull up your pants. Tuck your shirt in. Put your necktie on. Groom your hair. Look like you belong to somebody. Because the first impression is the lasting impression. Yeah, we, they need to be taught. See, see, this thing about it. We have to teach them these things because then when you come out the interview after you get the car, you want to pull your shirt out, pull your shirt out. But when you go in, I ain't talking about saying, pull your pants up, put a belt on. Make it look neat and presentable because when you walk in, that's what they're looking for. We need to teach our young people that when you sit down in an interview, set up with good posture. Don't be all scooped down in the chair. That ain't a time in an interview to, to cut your words off and yo, you know what I mean? Now, you got to understand, you got to speak their language. So they have to be taught these things. Amen? Amen. And so not only that, but see, that helps us because we begin to interact with each other. Showing them some of the things that what helped us get where we are and what can help them to get further on in life. I said one of the other things that I find that we can be helpful is always respect your elders, young people. Always say yes, sir, and no, sir. Yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. Don't, don't let nobody drive down to my yeah, what you want. No, the Bible is an honor those that are over you. And we need to have that respect for each other. See, respect is earned. It's not automatic given to you. And I want to say to the see, just because we got, you got gray on your head, don't mean you always deserve respect because the way you carry yourself. It's a new season, it's a new day, and God is good. It's revival time again here at St. Paul, uh, 7 p.m. each night. Our revival preacher once again will be Dr. Wesley McLaughlin, the great pastor of the Mount Island Missionary Baptist Church in Petersburg, Virginia. We always had it together. I'm not talking to those church folk that have been so perfect and want to brag about you being so clean. So come out each night at 7 p.m. and receive the blessing that God has for you because it is your season. May the 14th through the 16th at St. Paul Baptist Church, 1309 Lawkins Street in Greensboro.